Yeah, no, yeah. ESPN, however, did put on a, a, a definitely a more entertaining card. Um, main event, of course, was Jose Ramirez versus Victor Postol for Ramirez's WBC. Fucking plus. And, yeah, ESPN plus for WBC, WBO, you know, junior welterweight titles. But before They're that, great yeah. value titles. I mean, like, like, like what Pat said. <laughs> well, no, I think there's a his is large, his are legit. So it's. You know, I can't say great value. He's actually a legit champion. <laughs> I'm still, yeah, no, still great value. No game, right no game stop shit here. Yeah, no, he's, he, he's a legit champion, and I'll give him that. You know, but yeah, but before that fight, I mean, we that the undercard though. The, the one thing I said that Top Rank does well is they make undercards that you can watch sometimes, like the the undercard undercards at least, because they because their prospects are on display. And you know there was some nice scraps on there. The was it the Muratala? I'm pretty sure I probably butchered the last names. You know the brothers on there. One's a bantam, one's a lightweight, and they both got into some scraps in there. And they think they both suffered knockdowns on there. And uh, and then afterwards, and then of course they had Elvis Rodriguez. You know the big Dominican puncher. You know who... yeah, we we was talking about um, me and um, Sh- uh, and LB was talking about that last night um, about the the lightweight one. He's impressive. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, no, yeah, he was. Uh, I think his name was Ray, right? Yeah, Raymond. Yeah, Raymond. Yeah, yeah. Do nice blend of speed, power, offense, defense. Like he threw meaningful punches. You know, he was also slick, but he wasn't one of those niggas that got too focused on the slickness. But he wasn't one of those punchers that got too focused on the punch. And, like, he was, like, very balanced. Right, yeah, he was. I mean, save, save for that one, you know, save for that knockdown he did suffer. You know, he got up and continued, and continued to whoop some ass. So, I mean, you know, yeah, you know, he, he was impressed. I was like, man, this guy is actually, this guy is actually pretty good for a lightweight. He might actually challenge for... Uh, he could probably challenge for a belt in a couple years or so. A couple years, so he look ready now, nigga. Like mm-hmm. his brother, though, it needs to t- he needs needs a little uh, work, you know. Was, yeah, his brother is a little bit of a liability right now. He might, and he'll probably be the first to lose a zero <laughs> in between the brothers. Uh, but that was a hell of a fight too. At first, I think that one was probably a draw too. That fight was close. Uh, the younger one, uh, Gabriel, I think, yeah. Um, you know, but yeah, they, they, but they, but the bottom line is they did fight entertaining fights though. So I look forward to seeing them on future top ranked cards. And like I said, as I mentioned before, Elvis Rodriguez scores an absolutely brutal knockout. Again. Once again. <laughs> I mean, bro, this time dude got full extension on that punch. Like dude went down like he was shot. <laughs> I'm like, I can see top rangers probably seeing Dallas Hines with this dude right now because he's a welterweight. So, you know, obviously um, top rank needs welterweight. So I can see him being built up for so, a certain somebody, you know, down the line. I, I will not mention his name because a rant might pop off. <laughs> Fuck it, just say it. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah, so, you know, he, you know, he, we, we, we might see him as a future opponent for one Terrence Crawford. Who knows, you know, if he keeps a hold on the WBO welterweight title and he faces Spence, he takes his belts away and so on and so forth. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, but, you know, yeah, I was watching a score. Though. Absolutely. It was, it was a brutal knockout. Like, the referee didn't even buy the count. <laughs> the referee waved that shit off immediately. You know. So, yeah, I mean, you know, next to Clay Collard, you know, that's top ranks biggest attraction so far. <laughs> New <Newest> attraction. <laughs> And then we get to the co-main event, um, Arnold Barboza Jr. versus Tony Luis. Um, oh, who, who's going through the, who's going through the um, drive-thru? Okay, there we go. <laughs> yeah. Yo, LB, so what do you think about the Barboza Luis fight? Um, 
it was decent. I felt like Lewis had the wrong game plan. He, he stayed in front of Barbosa Jr. too much. And he was just getting tagged consistently too much. Um, I felt like Barbosa Jr. should have stopped him. Yeah, that's the thing too. Like, like, for the amount of punches he landed on him for the whole night. There were solid punches, but I don't think he really just went off on some like, all right, let me really sit down and dig in. Yeah, I think Barbosa never got out of first gear. Like pretty much he saw that he he basically he had the height and he had the he had the, he definitely had the reach advantage. So he kept him at the end of his punches. And he's like, you know what? I don't need to I don't need to put that in way. So he just pretty much he just gave him a slow beating. And Luis tried to do something. Every time he okay, what's going on here? That's it. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it seems like every single time Luis tried to try to come in, he, he was getting he got lit up by Barbosa. But Barbosa, like once he lit him up, he, he wouldn't fall through and try to like put him away. And that and that's where it got kind of tedious. You know, I was like Barbosa is clear was clearly had everything over him. Yeah, because it's like the fight was like from the fourth from the third or fourth round on, you saw what type of fight we we're gonna get and you got it for the rest of the fight. Mm-hmm. So it was kinda anticlimactic, like Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, it wasn't indecisive. You know, it was clean. It just, it didn't have that. It never went to the next gear. There was no drama in the fight. It kind of stretched and went on a little too long for my liking. So, yeah, you know, it, that was it, only a little sore spot for the night on that card, really. Yeah, it really was. But you can see that Barbosa is going to be a problem at one point. Like you can see no, Barbosa. Yeah, Barbosa is definitely legit. Like, yeah. I, I just don't think Lewis had anything for him, like, regardless of gameplay. Right. You know, and, yeah, yeah, but he, he didn't do himself no favors standing in front of a guy like that. Like, mm-hmm. you know, no lateral movement, no going backwards, no, no trying to make him come to you so you can counter. It's like he didn't try anything. It just literally, that was like the most novice level sparring attempt you could have. Yeah. <laughs> like, let me follow a guy who's bigger than me and let him punch first. Yeah, you know, it's like it's, yeah, it was basically. But like I say, I mean, what else could he do? I mean, do was yeah, he could do, do the shit I was saying. Like, <laughs> there was a whole bunch of shit he could have did. Like, he didn't move his head. He didn't. He didn't try to use no lateral movement. He he wasn't trying to pivot and turn him. He, you you know, he just literally followed and stayed right in front of him and let the guy be first. Mm. And then he would just eat everything. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, he, just, like, he, he didn't try anything. Like that's why it looks so bad for Barbosa, you know, not to KO him because it's got me thinking like, well, right, damn, like, dude, you you had the perfect type of opponent for you, and it's like you don't even try to, you know, be impressive, like, you know. Right. I was like, I mean, because I mean, I saw this dude brutally knock out Mike Alvarado. If you can knock out a shot, Mike Mike Alvarado, you can knock out somebody like Luis. Especially you know. with the size difference. Exactly. Yep. It was like man versus boy in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, no, but I, I, I won't take anything away from Barbosa. Barbosa, he did a thing. Like if you saw the skill, and you can see, and you can see yeah. that he will be a problem at 140. You know, for any for any 140 fighter down the line. You know, and it's, it's just, but like I said, it was just one of those fights that it needed a knockout, it needed a stoppage, like cut the yeah. dude over the eye, something. You know, you know, you got you, that, that fight should have never went the distance, um, like it did. So yeah, by the eighth, like you know, he should have had him, you know, dead to rights by the eighth, you know, seventh or eighth round. Yeah, like Louis should have been reeling from headshots by that time. Like one headshot, and he should yeah. be, he should have been on Queer Street, you know. But he, he landed just too much, like the consistency, yeah. like and the size difference. Yeah, yeah. that yeah. fight should have never been went past eight rounds. Right. By by the sixth round, we all would have been saying, "Damn, I think the ref should stop this." <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> and I'm just saying because I mean, we got at Porter for not stopping Formella, but yeah. even Formella was more competitive than you know Lewis. And at, at least Formella landed some jabs and some right hands. Like, like yeah. Lewis really didn't do anything a note. Not one damn thing. Like he literally like, he put the controller it. down and, and left, he and, and went and made a sandwich. 
Like, hold on, hold on. I'll be right back. <laughs> Nigga was gone for a whole fucking 20 minutes. <laughs> and you come back into the room and you see the nigga struggling against the damn computer. You're like, the fuck? Word. <laughs> oh, man. You know, but yeah, hopefully, hopefully Barbosa learns from this fight. Like, basically, like, you know, yes, it's good that you have, you know, yes, the boxing skills, yes, they're, they're on point in the salad, though. But you just got, you got to look, you just got to learn that you've got to put your man away. Like, if you're paying on Aspen one day, you got to step into second gear and put him away. After all, TV, you know, if people on TV or stream or however you watch ESPN Plus, you know, sees that, then it's going to be like, okay, yeah, this dude is a real problem. You know, put a man against, like, Taylor or Ramirez next at some point, you know? And, and I still think that she, I, th- I think he's ready for a title shot, but it's just like, you know, the title shot, the, the knockout would just would have just been the cherry, you know, the cherry on top of a cake or some shit like that. Yeah, he still needs to. It's like, man, throw him in there with Salcedo or, or, or a pro gray. Like, you know, I I, I got to see him, you know, somebody push back, man. Yeah, you know, and he. he, he, he I, push I, feel like, I feel like he'll beat up. I feel like he'll beat up Salcedo pretty bad, honestly. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I will. I, I'd favor him over Saucedo, but we look. We at least know Saucedo will try. Yeah, <laughs> for that's for damn sure. Bless his heart, he'll try. But <laughs> you know, Lewis just just let him just have his way with him, like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, yeah, it's it, 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 like I said, it just wasn't it just what they weren't on the same level. He wasn't on Barbosa's yeah. level, so you got what you get. <laughs> Yeah, like when you get an opponent like that, you need to start looking like Chris Eubanks <laughs> and beating their ass, doing some highlight reel KO type shit after a while. Like, uh, yeah, no, look, honest, like, look, look like Chris Eubank against jobbers, just not don't look like Chris Eubank against top competition. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, there you go. That's a, that's a better way to put it. Niggas be like, what? You want me to just eat jabs and miss wild hands? Like, <laughs> oh man, yo, but yeah, like I said, I mean, Top Rank has something with Barboza, and he did call us Sarcedo next. So yeah, I I, I would welcome uh, Sarcedo. Barboza. I mean, one one forty low key has the sauce, the high key on it, high key. Yeah. I, I been said that. I said I one, said one forty rebuilt itself in a short. One forty, both one forty. I was telling LB this last night. I said between one forty and one thirty-five, the crop of young talent is shit. There's a, there's a lot of there's a lot of it. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you even still got some old, you know, the old niggas hanging around because you still got Pedraza out there who's a good fighter for for both guys. You, you got Pro Gray, you got the Salcedo, you got Zapita. Um, you, you got some matchups at 140 that could be made, and I feel like people need to get these matches made so okay. so uh, the Taylor Ramirez winner could have a um a, a good number one contender to go at, you know, because because okay. usually what happens is everybody's waiting on that last fight to solidify everything, but mm-hmm. there's no good clear cut, you know, number one contender like you know. Plus, plus, and Baron like, Shake is still still floating around. Yep, he has a plus, fight in October. Plus, let's not let's not forget. I mean, I'm I'm just throwing this out there. Um, eventually, or which I think after this next fight, I feel like Tail Fimo will get to one. will be at one forty two. So 140 will get even better. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. One forty is it's definitely it rebuilt itself. You know, the World Boxing Super Series. You know. You know, kind of uh, up 140's profile again, and it's still in, in outside of it too. So yeah, it's, it's yeah. It, 140 it's, always been dope. It just it went through like a, a few, like maybe two years when Crawford was there, where it got stale and no one cared about it. And as soon as dude left, everybody cared about 140 again. Like 140 got dope. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, after Danny and you know, and Timmy and you know, and and. Peterson and all them and Matisse I had all they fights at 140. It's like they left yeah, 140. Kevin Alexander, and... Maidana. Exactly. Victor Ortiz. Like you had a whole era there and they left it like a desolate wasteland. Mm-hmm. Crawford came by and 
he beat up the first survivors that we found were still living there. <laughs> on some Mad Max shit. Yeah, on some Mad Max shit. And then he left again. And But it's like, those fighters, you know, they sprouted like seeds. And they, you know, and people started coming out and adapting to the wasteland. And then before you know it, you had them super series and niggas, you know, stepping up. Right. So, so yeah, it, it's, it's crazy how good 140 is looking right now. Right, yeah, and definitely looking forward, definitely looking forward, you know, to fights from that division. And speaking of one point, of course, that takes us to our main event. You know, as I mentioned before, it's... as long as these niggas could stay, could stay at one forty, because some of these niggas is kind of big for one forty. Like I'm, I'm afraid they might eat themselves out of fucking one forty. Well, I yeah. got no problem with Ramirez and um, um Taylor if they decide to move up because Taylor's big and. You even, know, Ramirez, even Barboza, even Barboza I mean, if Ramirez is lose now. Nah. Even Barboza hmm? seems kind of big for 140. Yeah, exactly. Like, it was like Crawford Gamboa in there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, but, yeah, Barboza's probably not. Let's say give it a couple more years before Barboza actually does move up. Yeah, that shit, the, the size difference is crazy. Looking like Oscar and Gotti. Yeah, it's, <laughs> You know, but uh, I don't. I don't think. I mean, I think. Well, I don't think Pastor will move up to move up past one forty. I mean, he's actually. I think he's a legit one forty fighter. Ramirez, yeah. though, might. We'll definitely see him move up at some point. <laughs> um, but and yes, I, Ramirez. We, we got to see I mean, why. You know. I mean, the fact the fact that they're touting him as a future Crawford opponent, you know, he's moving up. Yeah, you know, it's only a matter of time. It depends on how many. Depend. It depends on when he actually loses his belts. I'm yeah, sure. but see, this is the thing. He's only going to be a dope Crawford opponent if he beats uh, Taylor convincingly and moves up. Right. If he loses, that that Crawford fight is done. Yeah. <laughs> and we're going to be like, well, damn, Josh Taylor needs to fight Crawford. And you know what? We're going to say Josh Taylor has a better resume, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah I, I, I definitely... Even, I mean, I'm no fan of Taylor, but if Taylor beats Ramirez, then it's gonna be like, I mean, that dude will, dude will legitimately roll 140. I mean, <laughs> there's no question yeah. about that. He's already got all the, got all the scouts. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's already he's already number one at 140. Like right? now, he's yeah. that, those those finishing scalps to just put the cherry on the top. Yeah, he just he need to get he need to handle his man though, which isn't a guarantee, and he need to get Ramirez. Just two more fights. Yeah, there's two more fights. Then, then I, I wouldn't have no problem with him moving up because I felt like he already kind of beat all the top guys. And it's like this new crop got to sort it out. But can we saying all this? We ain't even speak about uh, Postal. Yeah, you know. And now, I mean, Ooh, when this Ramirez part is the I mean. And the boxing lesson Ramirez was getting. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like when this fight was announced, I mean, I mean, people have very strong feelings about Pastor. I don't know why. Personally, I, I think I, I think Pastor is a problem. I, I've always thought that. He I've never, I've never liked him. I've seen him like live, and I've needless to say, I have not been impressed at all. Like, just that's just me. Though. Nope. He has a he has a good jab, and that's it. He has he, he also has underrated power when he actually uses it. But the problem is his style. He likes to. He like. He's a mover. He, he goes against his actual nature. His actual safety true first ass nigga. Yeah, you know. Great but value he, clips, dude. But he Shout can make it a PJ. There you go. <laughs> but he can make it a tough night if you're not careful. I mean, Taylor had a tough night. Had a tough night with him, you know. And of course, you know, he did knock out Lucas Matisse, and you know, to actually become champion, you know, so many years ago. Um, and then he lost to the Crawford, which people when the fight people don't like. <laughs> I think that's what I think that's where the postal uh hatred really ramped up. No, he was <laughs> overrated before Crawford. People were using him to solidify Crawford. And it's yeah. like when we seen him fight like first of all, he never looked special before Crawford. And then with Crawford, he looked worse than he ever looked. So it was like, okay, I knew this nigga wasn't wasn't shit. <laughs> He has a great fight with Taylor, but it's Taylor's 14th fight, and he gets dropped and pretty much, you know, overwhelmed. But you know, he hangs tough. Mm-hmm. As he you know, always that's post career to me. Right, and then we're supposed, and basically we're gonna see. We're, most people thought that Romero was just gonna was gonna run right through him, 
Uh, that was not the case. Not the case at all. Um, yeah, Ramirez, I think, and, and part of it could be because the fight was scheduled two times and it was canceled two times. So Ramirez probably had what we call an extended training. The only thing Ramirez camp. ran into was a fucking jab. Yeah, he did. Yep. All the fucking time was running into that fucking jab. <laughs> it was no like, head movement, no no parrying, no, 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 no bobbing, weaving, nothing. Yeah. Ramirez ate so many headshots that it made Tim Bradley screw up his name. Yeah. Ramirez, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, damn it. Yeah. I mean, Best part is that he was doing that. He was like, oh my god. <laughs> he even knows he's yeah. fucking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I just hope it was just either Timmy was drinking. That or, shit was hilarious. Or Timmy is you no know, Timmy's brain is not getting more addled from punishment. You know, what I'm saying like <laughs> I like to believe it's just him. He just had a couple of too many drinks. Oh <laughs> yeah, because I was like, it was like, what is it? dude, spit it out. What are you trying to say? <laughs> like, no, he, he was just, he was just, he was just, he was just on the sauce. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, but yeah, no, that fight was interesting. Like Postal, uh, Postal, what basically what made Postal Postal in this fight and what kept him in the fight, Ramirez was just like couldn't do anything about it. Uh, he tried, God willing, um, in the in the first half of the fight though. But I think Postal was just he went back, to, he, he kept on going by the jab. But when Postal planted his feet and threw a right hand, he was shaking Ramirez. The problem was he never did it. He didn't do it as much as he should have. Yo. You know, I think even like Freddie Roach was telling him to go do it, but he wasn't. And I think Ramirez, you know, in the second half, like you know, started to claw his way back into the fight. Um, but I do want to mention though, Andre Ward's scorecards. I mean, Trash. Ward was Trash. Ward was one. <laughs> yeah, no, I was like, Ward, I mean, I, cause I, I get it. It's probably a Cali thing, you know. You know that's. You know, you got you, you got to big up your Cali dude, whatever, man. But come on. <laughs> oh no, like, that shit was just uh, uh, off. It yeah. was a blind. Nah, thing. dude, dude, had, dude, had, dude had him winning the first. Nah, dude had him winning the first five rounds. I'm like, nah, that, now you want some bullshit? Like, nah, stop. That. I mean, you would think that you know, because fucking Pistol and Ward both lived and died by the jabs. You think he would be actually more, you know, he would appreciate what Pistol was doing. You know, it was like, you know, it was like, come on, like, no, exactly. so was in that fight. Sometimes it'd be your own jabbers. See, that betray I, you. I felt, post, I felt, the poster won like the first four rounds out of five. Yeah. Yep. You know, like I said, Ramirez did come in though, and then there were sometimes, you know, like he'd land, he'd shake Pastor on the ropes, but when he went to fall up, Pastor already moved his ass away from. The- Away from there and recovered. Like Ramirez, not at one time, surprisingly, did had did not have Pistol on the verge of a knockout at all. You know, <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, like, you know, damn, like, dude's supposed to be some sort of finisher, and that wasn't happening, not at all. <laughs> um, another weird thing that I found in the fight too was late in the fight, you know, Pistol actually, I think it was like tenth or eleventh round, like he. There was some loose, like loose tape around his uh, his glove. Oh shoot, I got hiccups. Uh, <laughs> he had some loose tape around his gloves, but he actually called time on himself, so the referee could drag him to the car to actually get the to remove the loose tape. I thought that was kind of weird. I was like, I never seen that one before. I'm like, usually that's the referee's job to actually stop that shit for that. <laughs> shit, that's a first. <laughs> I'm gonna call Ripley to get that face hugger, nigga. <laughs> oh man, though. but yeah, I, I just think that Ramirez had no real plan. You know, I think he, I think he just thought he was just gonna walk yeah, through this. Follow, dude. eat jabs, rinse, wash, rinse, and repeat. Get turned, <laughs> not not cut off the ring. His punches mind like you, snap. Yeah, M- mind you, Pastor left his left the right hand in his pocket way more than he usually does. Hmm. Yeah, I, I don't you know. Just get, you, you just you just eating jabs all day. The fuck. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but, I mean, it could be like say that Ramirez, those right hands that he got hit with, were like, you know, no, nah, I can't let this dude hit me like that anymore. You know, but Pistol, though, he did have a Pistol did have a good last round. I think Pistol actually threw threw that more. You know, and 
Yeah, yeah. And they and all the judges gave Ramirez the twelfth round. Yeah, which is right, stupid. Yeah, you know, fucking stupid. Uh, yeah, I, I, I like you know if that if well, of course, if they had they gave Pistol the relic like they should have, uh, that would have been a majority draw. It would have been a draw. Yeah. You know, it's, but yeah, these Yo. didn't, they didn't want the man to win. <laughs> Um, and I think all of us, you know, and I said, right, they, they I got the demo on your third one. What's that? No, I said they was doing everything. They got the demo on your stern on. Yeah, they did. <laughs> They're like, you know, we, we, they, we, they we knew a bigger it. fight was on the horizon. So it was like, nah, we ain't gonna fuck this up. I ain't yeah. gonna say it was a robbery, but it, it could have gone either way. It was close. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I thought it was close too. I mean, but yeah. I think. I mean, but I know you, you and Pete thought that Postol actually won that fight. I felt like he pulled it off like a good seven rounds to five. Like he won the first four rounds. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I mean, you, you can make a case for both of them and the draw. Yeah. Um, I had it one fifteen, yeah, one thirteen. Still on the draw. Because yeah, okay. you know, it's not like Ramirez swept those middle rounds. And I, said, I thought he lost the last round. He did, you know, and then it was, I mean, the only score that I found that was off was Steve Weisfeld with his one sixteen, one twelve. There was no one sixteen, one twelve in this fight. It just especially from nah, nah, it wasn't. Ne- yeah. Neither guy won eight rounds. <clears throat> yeah, not at all. Yeah, and Steve was just Steve was doing too much <laughs> with that score. Yeah, you know, <laughs> and, and Andre Ward. Oh my goodness, like he even, was just so Ward, he even was Ward doubling down on everything he was wrong with. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's the funny part. Even Ward didn't give um, Ramirez eight rounds. So his horrible. He ended up with a reasonable scorecard, even though he started all fucking wrong. But I think that was. I think. I think Bradley ruined the fight for him. I think Ward made a conscious decision to kind of be more generous to Postal in the later half of the fight because Postal didn't dominate the, the second half. But if you go by Ward's scorecard, he was. So it's kind of like, what the fuck? Like, to me, you can't even use Ward's scorecard as a good uh, barometer of that fight. Because <clears throat> if you already got Postel losing the first five rounds, god damn. Yeah, no. You know, Ward. Like, you, you, know, you already Ward fucked is, up the score. Yeah, Ward is funny like that, too. I mean, Ward himself was never a Ramirez type fighter or whatever, and anything like that. And. You know, it's, and he talks like he like he like he was one. You know, dude, it, Ward Ward be commenting like he's fucking prime Joe Frazier. Like this nigga be wanting everybody to turn into David too, and 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 you know he needs to let he needs to let his let his hands go more. Um, he needs to <laughs> realize when he needs to stop somebody. Like, dude, shut the fuck up. Like you're the last nigga that need to be saying this shit when you was always so fucking content and damn safety the safe safely decisioning everyone to death even niggas who was damn older even though niggas who was worn out drained it's like you never fucking tried to say okay you know what i could get this guy out of here no you said jab 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 final bell <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, so that shit be just driving me crazy when when he does that shit and i love when bradley calls him out on it like even this shit with the body punches like the body shots I mean, like, get the fuck out of here. Like, you mean to tell me the medicine ball does not help you toughen up your lower body and prepare for to take some body punishment? <laughs> <laughs> like, seriously, Ward? I'm like, but this is Ward who fought a whole bunch of Europeans who are not known for going to the body, where Bradley was fighting dudes who all go to the body. Like, <laughs> yeah, he, yo, Bradley had no choice in that one because. That was, that, was, that, was, that was the only effective punch that he effective punch that he actually did. You know, but then of, he fought guys who had various types of offense who would challenge him to the body. Ward Ward fought a lot of the same type of fighters. If, if we want to be honest, mm-hmm. the only type of guys he fought that was a little different were Bika, Miranda, and maybe Chad Dawson. Yeah, and, and Bika gave him the most problems because Bika was just as dirty, <coughs> just as rough as Ward, and Ward had problems handling that. And Ward actually went yeah. back to box. See, Miranda gave Miranda gave Ward a good fight too. That was a step up fight for Ward at the time. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, just really physical guys. Yeah. Yeah, like and he had the right game plan for Ward, which was pushing him back behind the double jab. Mm-hmm. So, so I, I just ain't really get where Ward was coming from because I'm like, you know, you fought a lot of dudes who were just straight up, up and down, no special effects. <laughs> Bradley's fighting guys, you know, like Devin Alexander, he, you know, Pacquiao, Provodnikov. You know, Lamont Peterson, you know, Marquez, Marquez, Kendall Holt, you know, Junior Witter, all these types of guys who throw punches from different angles, throw hard body shots, all that shit. Like, Mm -hmm. like the the resume is like levels apart, honestly, if we want to, if we want to just keep it real. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's true. Yeah, definitely. um, Riley definitely had the higher fights, though. I mean, the, the, the only thing is the harder fights and harder fights from better competition, though. Right. I mean, my only thing. I mean, my only thing with Bradley, obviously, is for for who he fought, though. It's the ESPN fighter that actually shortened his career. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it'd it be like that sometimes. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Like you know, for a guy that was getting pound for pound for pound, you know, attention, you know, was up there. You know, you don't expect him to go life and death and to get his brain scrambled. By someone who lost the war to Mauricio Herrera. I mean, that doesn't happen. I mean, Styles made yeah. fights, but I, I feel you. You don't expect the guy who handled Lamont Peterson like nine rounds to three mm-hmm. to, you know, go life and death with Provodnikov. Yeah, exactly. You know, so. or almost get knocked out by Jesse Vargas. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, you, that was you need a play, uh, police. I'm sorry, plot armor at the last second. <laughs> <laughs> the power of a zombie. Uh, oh, yeah, man. I, I swear, sometimes it was, uh, I appreciate it. we should definitely go down the careers of both Ward and Bradley, you know, depending if they trigger something, you know. And yeah, that's uh, Low key got me triggered, so that's why I was doing it already. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I was, I was like, as soon as he started, I'm like, here it comes. Here it comes. <laughs> you know, but just it, the therapy, just the going off. like I said, you know, Ramirez, he won, but he didn't look good. And Ramirez had a million one excuses, too. Like it wasn't like. Oh Lord! Don't get me started with that. <laughs> <laughs> now, so now, this is my. This is my. Can take it from game. here? Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, but, 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 you know, it's a pandemic, and you know, there, there's no, there's no fans. You know, I eat off the thrill of the crowd and my family. What am I gonna do without my family? Who's <laughs> <laughs> like exploring? Yeah. I, I, I deserve adulation from a crowd. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, I deserve a few booze if I get hit with a jab three times. <laughs> oh, I deserve God. to hear some oohs and ahs when I land the right hand after getting out box for the majority of the round. <laughs> oh yeah, Ramirez has yeah Ramirez, but well, all, all Ramirez can do right now. I mean, granted, yes, this this fight's oh, 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 I overtrained. I, I overtrained. You know. <laughs> I mean, can you really overtrain for a damn 37 year old, 36 year old? <laughs> I'd hate to have to fight a young nigga and they'd be like, man, you know, I overtrained for you. Like, oh, really? Like, and I'd be like, oh, so that means body shots are open for you. Like, okay. <laughs> let, me, let me get my Carlos Mount Musa Vivian Harris on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, man. But yeah. Oh, man. No. Yeah, the no, Ramirez needs to get his ass in line. Like he almost like that could that could easily went left, and Pastor could have been facing Taylor again. Which I, I no, mean, they would they would have rematched it, and then fuck yeah. It. <laughs> but if, if there's one thing that this fight showed, it, I, I hope ESPN you know takes notes and never ever 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 puts Ramirez number one on the 140 pound for pound because. I saw that the last time on the ranking. We didn't forget. Don't do it again. <laughs> Consistency cops, we're still here. <laughs> yeah, don't do that shit ever. Like you can't be number one looking like that. And it's like like Ramirez only had one top level fight at 140 where he looked good. Like it was, you know, and that's the Maurice Hooker fight. And mm-hmm. and and more and Hooker was given as well as receiving for most of that fight until Ramirez kind of just, I guess, turned the 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 audience started sounding louder or, or whatever. Because <laughs> <laughs> he was getting jabbed up in that fight, but he was moving his head more and and he was contesting the jab. He was jabbing with Hooker, 
and, and it gets post on and, and, and slipping and making Hooker pay, and then yeah. eventually went to the knockout. <laughs> But with, but with Paul Stahl, he was like, fuck it. it. It's like one of those video games where you start the level and they took away all your powers. Mm. <laughs> it's like they took away uh, uh, Ramirez, all his ability to box aggressively. Mm-hmm. Like, we, we won't have you throw the jab and move your head. Just go get him. Like, the fuck? <laughs> so, yeah, he he definitely didn't impress. Um uh, I can see him winning, you know. I personally thought he lost, but I can see a draw. I can see seven, seven rounds to five either way. You know, it just wasn't an impressive showing from Ramirez. Um, Not at all. He's definitely going to be the underdog against Josh Taylor or the winner of Josh Taylor and you know his next fight. The random unknown Asian, you know, we can we have, we have to call it how we see it. You know, now if you heard us talk about the random unknown Asian, like. You know they, they they pop up noise. Sometimes they cause upsets. If they don't cause upsets, they give yeah. the, they give the word, word to Joshua Greer. <laughs> yeah, word to Joshua Greer. Yeah, which already happened. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I mean, and it's a good chance too that now Ramirez could be number one if Taylor does lose to this random unknown age. Yeah, yeah. That's the only way he's number one. If if, if Taylor loses, then you could say Ramirez number one. It just. It, it all, it's also going to depend on Taylor lose. If Taylor lose in a robbery, then I'm like, nah, I run it back, you know, because Ramirez already had like, you know, the Zapita fight and Postal fight kind of showed you that Ramirez is like he he has some Canelo in his game, you know, yeah. <laughs> can't really outpace people on his level, like mm-hmm. like Josh Taylor, he fights tough for competition, but he kind of decisively beats him. Where you, where you don't feel like, well, I think they were both good tonight. It was more like, yeah, both guys fought good, but yeah, Taylor was better. Yeah, I don't get that with Ramirez. Shit, I don't even think Ramirez. I don't even. I don't even think Ramirez beats Progress. I give Progress the the edge in in a Ramirez fight. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah the ditto. Yeah, definitely agree with you. Um, Shoot, man. I don't know how good Ramirez does against Relic. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know what happened to Relic, you know. Well, I mean, you guys asked me, you know, in the in the Super Series. And by Progress. Yeah, against Progress. <laughs> yeah. And then he just like, you know what? It's, you know, <laughs> he's, been, he's, been, he's been gone, man. He hasn't made no... Yeah. Yeah, Think what, about this. Like, what about Baron check versus Ramirez? Dog, that would be like that. That, that that's that's, that's a, a fight of the year, right there. Like you know, I, I, I honestly, it would be it would be such a war. Like, I mean, I could. I mean, I, I don't know. I think Ramirez might lose that. You know, but Berenczak, he's but Berenczak's actually been down before. Like Berenczak, I mean, Berenczak has been has been in wars. I know. think I think he I think he'd beat Berenczak, but Berenczak would make him work for it. Yeah. Would he make him work for it? Yeah. My <laughs> he'd be working Bro, that's literally, that's like a 55-45 type of fight. Like mm-hmm. Ramirez might be the slight favorite, but I feel like if it really gets into a long draw on our war and Baron Shake starts just slugging for the fences like he does, like man, if Ramirez has an off night that he's he he might get stopped or, or dropped hurt or something. Yeah, it ain't going to be like, oh, no, I need the enemy of the crowd. Like, you better you, you better fight that man like he's trying, like he's trying to kill you <laughs> and shit like that. You better, you better, you better do something, God damn it. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to hear no excuses. <laughs> you know, the gym fan was on too loud. <laughs> what the fuck? I didn't what have the fans from people watching me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, but no, but it was it was a good fight to watch though, and like I said, you know, ESPN, like I said, you know, top, I mean, top rank is definitely having a better year, especially better at coming from after, you know, because pre-COVID, the cars weren't really hitting like that, but I think now they're starting to enter, you know, they're starting to enter their stride a little bit, where yeah, because all the fights that got canceled are happening now, <laughs> right? You know, and and the, the actually and they do have some good cards coming up on the horizon, you know, so. You know, you know, so like so it's cool for them, but they need to start putting some fights on regular. I mean, I have ESPN Plus, but some of the but the, the two ESPN cards back to back would have done better on regular ESPN at least for more exposure. You know, that's just me though. Um, yeah. 
But um, you know, it, but yeah, but that was a good night on ESPN Plus. And overall, it was, it was a decent fight weekend. Um, can't really complain too much. Yeah. You know, yeah, maybe next week. Next week, though, we'll see if we'll, if, we'll, if, we'll, if we'll complain some more, depending if you know whether or not what. We'll I mean, it's decreasing. You know, next week probably it'd be horrible because you know last week we had Dylan White pursuing. You know, Smith, Alvarez, you had all, you had a whole bunch of shit going last week. This week, you still got like a doubled up card, but, you know, the stakes are a little lower, but, you know, you still have some, some competitive fights. Next week is going to be like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, Jamal Herring isn't, I mean, has an interesting fight against Jonathan Nakendo. You know, what's yeah, the yeah. Herring's fight is decent. Oh, I'll give him that. Yeah, that's a good, oh, which that should have been happening a while ago, but, you know. Uh, yeah, Harry has bad luck. Maybe this time's now the yeah. right time. It's mainly the PBC card that's on struggle. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm just not looking at me because if he, Ugas will probably have Ramos hanging around and shit like that and go for 12 rounds, which will absolutely piss me off because I'm like, I could have spent my Saturday doing something else. <laughs> oh, man. But it's going to be on Sunday, though. Oh, right. It's on Sunday. The, Ram- the Ramos, the U- U- guys fight. <sighs> I think that's a long weekend for me, so that won't be too bad. Yeah, it, I mean that's it, the thing. At least you get the Jamal Herring fight, and you yeah. just get to enjoy that, and you ain't got to worry about no aftertaste of the PBC card. Aftertaste. Yeah, <laughs> 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 like, oh, the Vendetti Laura. <laughs> that's that. That's 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 real talk right there. <laughs> Why um, they give us a decaf fight? For real. <laughs> Oh man, but uh, but yeah, I think we've got we've, we've come to the end of our show for tonight. Um, so final thoughts. Uh, I'll start with you first, PJ. Do you have any final thoughts? Wait, wait, hold on, hold on, wait. wait. I thought I, th- I thought you was gonna um get into your other groove. What you talking about? I mean, we ain't gonna honor your man's. We doing that tomorrow. What we doing tomorrow. Oh, I, I didn't know niggas. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I didn't even know we was going to do this one today. Like, no, no one confirmed. I thought I did. Nah, you know, you, all you do, look, real talk, guys. This nigga said, all right, I'll see if uh, King P available. And then that was it. Next thing I get is 9.50. Oh, the link is in the chat. Oh. Oops, my bad. No, I mean, that's good. Yeah, that's Tomorrow, though, yeah, let's yeah. save our thoughts. Nah, confirming ass nigga. Yeah, nigga, shut up. <laughs> he, I mean, he confirmed, well, well, to be fair, to be fair, he confirmed it to me. He confirmed it to me because he, we said that you we don't count. <clears throat> you, you the one we waiting for. It. <laughs> she, I, I told, I told him I, I'd be, I'd be ready around ten. Then he told me the topics. So, <clears throat> to, to take that up with Pat. Damn boy, management. Yeah, man. You know, <laughs> it comes from the top. You know, me, me and Pat ain't have our executive meeting yet, so <laughs> I, I'll run that by him. You know, confirming shit. <laughs> you know, you don't say okay. I gotta. I'll, I'll let PJ know. I'll ask PJ, and then you know, never. You know, you never get back. Like you making this sound like a cartoon, nigga. <laughs> 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 but yeah, no, yeah. We'll talk about that echo, echo. After the, after the review. So yeah, my my bad to throw shit off, but uh, uh I guess uh go back to PJ. Yeah, PJ, your final thoughts, bro. Um, I mean, I'm still a little dejected from the Lara fight. <laughs> <laughs> um, kind of like drained all my energy. Uh overall, it was okay fight. The ESPN one was the better of the two. It's always. Even though we all know what great value Klitschko is going to do, it's always fun to see what the results will be every single time. So overall, it was okay. I'll see how next week turns out. Hopefully, LB's prediction isn't too accurate. Otherwise, I just won't watch anything next week. <laughs> Word. Yawn. <laughs> oh, man. Yo, LB, man. What final thoughts? Oh, man. Uh... <clears throat> yeah, like PJ said, you know the decent weekend of fights um it felt like a chore getting through the laura fight low-key but 
I've seen worse Laura fights, so it wasn't, you know, wasn't that bad. But Apostol Ramirez was definitely the the hot topic of the weekend. Um, so, but other than that, um, y'all just make sure y'all subscribe um, to uh, the YouTube, the IG, the, the Twitter, Podomatic. Um, the episode two cartoon is almost done. I just got some clips. Um, I was working on episode three right before this episode of before this podcast. So we working ahead, getting shit on point. Um, got the special effects on point. You know, PJ. You know, we, me and PJ doing a training episode. Shit looking dope. Get the power up. You know, we just got to do pad scene at the end and uh we should be finishing hopefully we could drop it you know this week or next week so be on the lookout for that just make sure you sign up you know you, I mean, so, i'm sorry you subscribe and you know so you know when everything drop yes sir you know i i, I always look forward to the cartoon man you know cartoons you know because that's some next year no one else is doing them cartoons man you know so this is this is, so like i was you know, i take pride in that you know, and LB, LB and, you know, and Kobe doing some work with those cartoons and the animation and stuff like that, you know, so, yeah, I love, I love it, I love the concept of it, I love it all, you know what I mean, so, uh, uh, P, uh, final thoughts? So, you already know what it is, Ring Gang Radio all day, every day, twice on Sundays, you already know where you can find us, ringgangradio.com, com, com, yeah, um, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. You already know what it is. Give us some 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 subscriptions, some follows, some likes. You already know Ring, Ring Gang Radio Cartoon Episode Two on the way. Read it. Uh, episode and we already got Episode One out, Two, Three coming. We all week we going with the cartoons, man. I just love it. Like you gonna love these cartoons. This is just these, these cartoons just show Ring Gang Radio is the best out and no matter what we do and also just while we're on the um topic of cartoons i just want to throw out something else just unrelated um i actually want to give a shout out to this is kind of personal to me i want to give a shout out to cartoon network because i saw the video that they put up yesterday for toonami and as a kid growing up watching cartoon network and toonami i felt this about they talked about black lives matter and i personally just appreciate that as a young black kid that grew up watching toonami and unfortunately it's been pilfered by these anime weirdo fans that want to bring their fucking racism and shit and they want to go to you know to cartoons like oh politics has no place in this don't bother us with this. Nah, fuck you. You're a piece of shit if you have a problem with Toonami saying Black Lives Matter. So go fuck yourself. Like y'all, y'all pilfered anime to make it to where now if if a, if a, a black kid list likes anime, it's all well. You're that's mad white. As if black kids weren't fans of anime since the beginning. Like nah, fuck out of here. So that's all I gotta say about that. Shout out to Toonami. You're. Yeah, it's funny though. It's funny how saying Black Lives Matter triggers certain people. It's like, it's not Black Lives Matter. It's all lives matter. Okay, pal. You know, fuck out of here. That has always confused me. <laughs> you know, it's like people don't understand the concept or don't want don't want to know the what about Black Lives Matter. All lives don't matter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all you know, I, I just I just had to get that off my chest because I I be having to smoke for for white anime fans are the ones that honestly piss me off the most because they've first off anime is Japanese so y'all have taken Japanese culture and commercialized it and pilfered it and made it a safe haven for you for you to flex your racism where you won't get any pushback and it's all oh, well identity politics and forced dive but diversity has no place here. We don't have to worry about it. I mean, it's because they got away with it with video games. So, I mean, mm-hmm. that's the next step. Yep. King P is like, you know what? I have to draw the line here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah people, people be silly sometimes, man. But, uh... But yeah, no, I got to definitely, you know, shout out Ring Gang Radio, 
And if you was like the YouTube, you know, appreciate, you know, us, you know, slowly getting our numbers up or whatever. So again, like I said, when you hear us, you know, tell your friends this, tell them to sub, tell them to comment, you know, tell them all that too. And, you know, and if the requests are on the level, we may try to fulfill them if you want to hear something from us. Uh, and, uh, yeah, but other than that, you know, just watch out, you know, articles, you know, on the way, cartoon is on the way. Um, yeah, just watch out. I mean, we're, always, we're, we're forever always building, always creating. There's always something new coming, you know, from the ring game crew, because that's how we do. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, for myself, Pass Corporate the Nolinger Representer, for LB, Shuttleworth the God, the Go Artist, for King People, Dega P, for PJ, the Fight Architect. You know, this has been another wonderful episode of Real Talk, where, as always, it shit's real, we talk about it. So, until next time, peace.